Hi, everybody. Say hi. Hi. Um, we're doing a little video blog this time because, quite frankly, we're too lazy to write um, anything out, and we've just been so far behind that there's too much to say. Um, so right now we're using my computer and Stephanie's um, iPhone torch, which she's very proud of, so Winner. give her some kudos Winner. for that. <laughs> um, we're at the Green Elephant Hostel in Cape Town. We arrived yesterday morning at like 7 a.m. after an 18-hour bus ride. Um, probably my low point of the trip, um, being on a bus for 18 hours straight is just um, not something that I ever want to do again, but I have to. Um, Stephanie uh, took great pleasure in shining light in my eye on her um, watch that lights up while I was trying to sleep. Um, amongst other various antics. She wasn't she trying to sleep. She was just dealing with her various gadgets and books and stuff. Okay. She, wa she, wasn't, she wasn't sleeping. Anyway, the chair that was in front of me got lounged back, reclined back. So All like, of the chairs were lounged I had back. About, like, we were honestly, all in the same situation. This much leg room. And it was absolutely fine. I have longer legs than Alana, and I dealt. Anyway, she likes to draw on her um, years of traveling around the world and bus experience. So... Um, she's a veteran in this, in this, in this arena, but anyway, I hated I'm, that. I'm, I'm patient is, is the key. Okay. Um, anyway, so also the stops that we made, there was like five of them, but they weren't enough. I had to go to the bathroom a lot more frequently than we were stopping. So she I was went, drinking too much. I, <laughs> I went downstairs to the emergency bathroom, um, on the, uh, on, on, on the bus. And, um, I mean, I use the bathroom anywhere. I don't, I'm not really particular. Like I don't, I'm not one of those people that has to take poos, you know, in their house or anything like that. But I opened the door and there was like just a pool of water on the ground. So even I wasn't going in there. Um, <laughs> anyway, and uh, the bus wasn't very full and the seats were pr fairly comfortable. It's just that, again, being situated for 18 hours is quite a lot. And then also the stuffs that we made. Like the food options were like um, just like convenience store stuff. It was like pretty poor. So. Um, well, when you stop at these places, it's about making the right choices. So Alana heads for these dry looking sandwiches that were not appetizing at all. Purchased one, then saw that I was in line for another place. Followed my lead, but didn't choose what I bought, which was a simple ham, cheese, and tomato sandwich. Tasted absolutely fine. She proceeded to buy the um, veggie burger. This which is, a greasy, is usually a safe choice. This is a greasy joint in the middle of nowhere. A veggie burger is supposed to be a safe choice. In North America. Where anyway. are we? It was just a failure. It was a failure on our levels. And just to top it off, I need to say this additional point. Um, the company we were traveling with, which is called Indercate, and I mean, legitimate in almost every single way, but um, they're just really religious and stuff. So that's like part of their, you know, corporate mantra. So before we we're about to take off, um, the lady who was making the announcement says a prayer, which, you know, is fine. Um, we just bowed our heads. And then the in, in bus entertainment um, was their own custom family friendly stuff that included, first of all, the volume on this thing was way too loud for a public. Uh, transportation service. Um, it should be optional. You should be able to tune in if you want to. This was blasting in my ears, and I could hear it like over my iPod. I was just trying to just basically put on to buff that, buff that stuff out. They played three family-friendly movies, um, all about some sort of uh, religious finding God, going back to church stuff. Which, by the way, when I looked over at Stephanie, she was captivated by the film, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, well, the, captivated. The, the thing is, is and smiling. The acting. The acting was really bad, but the moral behind all the stories was quite touching. Okay. And if you listened and paid attention and were not overly frustrated and impatient, then you would have maybe enjoyed. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> we had a last uh, really good couple of days in Johannesburg. We didn't really do too much on the excursion front. Um, maybe you're gonna make a comment on that in a second, but um, I had to like finish a couple of resume stupid things and I just got that done at the Parker's well before we came down here, which was actually um, very prepared of me and smart to get out of the way. Um, it was cold weather, and um, did we have anything else? Oh, we went, we went, we already told you guys, we went to Constitutional Hill, a power time museum. We went to uh, the dam, we went to go to the dam one day, the Hoover Spore Dam, um, where Heidi and Des, well, Heidi's mother has a house there, which is having construction done on it now, and Jessica's boyfriend, um, they have a home. So we drove all the way out there, went to this place called the Chameleon Market, oh. which is like an African crafts market, which Stephanie loved, um, could have spent all day there. Uh, I, I, I felt this it. No, continue. Difficult to deal with the um, the merchants because like everything is negotiable, so they basically say a price, and then if you walk away, they say I'll take I'll take whatever you can pay me, and then they look at you in your eyes and say they don't have lunch that day. So it's like a very personal encounter, and I know I guess that's just the nature of the business, but it's like I felt it hard to difficult with, deal difficult to deal with. Yeah, it's it's basically the same thing as as what you deal with in the straw market. Right, back home, and I've never been there, so yeah, I can't relate. Really. Salon has never been there. Shame. Um, 
Anyway, uh, we did get some really cool things there. Um, I can't really disclose that information because they're gifts for people. Um, Stephanie, of course, uh, just went to town and was doing this like dance afterwards at, at sort of in pride of what she'd purchased, but that's just Stephanie. I don't remember doing a dance, but anyways. <laughs> um. And then we went to the dam, but like Nassau, um, you know, sometimes it's infrastructural challenges here and the power was out. So this was not really too much of an issue when we arrived at three o'clock because the sun was still out, even though it was still freezing cold. Um, but at five o'clock when it started to get dark, we really decided to just hightail it because there'd be no heating, no hot water, no lighting. We could, you know, it was, it, was it would have been fine because we were indoors in an enclosed area. We, all we had to do was get under the bedding and we would have been fine. I mean, we're, no, cause we're, you know, it, we're, we have, we had a perfectly nice house. We just didn't have light and heat maybe, but we could have been under blankets and put some warmer things on. You know, when Heidi said, should we go? Stephanie was like, well, I would be fine, but I think a line would be cold. She's like, jerk, anyway. Because you were lying there miserable. If anyone had seen my Facebook <laughs> oh my. photo of her lying on my bed, or her bed, under the covers, eyes closed, hat on, just completely miserable, not, not entertaining anyone. When she's cold, hungry, and tired, not a good combination. Excusing my words. Anyways, so we decide to leave. So we, leave, we start, we pull off. We're about like 10 kilometers away. And then we get this call from Jessica saying that the power's back on. So we make the high tail back there. And I don't, I don't know what kind of power she was referring to because basically it was like a flicker of a light. The kettle wasn't even working. So we ended up eating this um, Thai curry really chicken well, like, by the way. that Heidi made, sorry about that, um, over cold chicken over bread. And when we were hungry, so it was, it was good. Again, fine. It was fine. Um, and then, anyway, so that, that was kind of a plan that, and we, we were going to go to the, um, to the caves and the, and the cradle of mankind, but, um, uh, well, mostly we didn't go because I kind of didn't want to because I was trying to finish my stuff off. Um, and Stephanie was, she sort of wanted to go, but she wasn't like, you I know, did want to go, Stephanie's but I, didn't, put anyone but I knew else that out. you didn't want to go and I knew that yeah. the Parkers didn't want to really drive us out there. So. Right. Right. So we didn't do that. And then, uh, we also went to a movie on Friday night. We saw the, um, administration bureau, which Matt Damon, and it was really, really good. Um, so that was, even that was a kind of like a Westerner thing, obviously we still enjoyed it. Um, and then when we got in yesterday at the hostel, it's my first time staying in hostel. Stephanie, of course, has stayed in hostel before. <laughs> and um, it's really nice. There's six people in our room. The, the hostel's not uh, fully occupied right now, so it's not that busy at all. The people here are, like, super, super friendly. Stephanie's already going to write a review and stuff like that on them. But they, like, arranged all of our tours for us. Um, everybody's young and friendly and warm. And it's, it's Cape Town's so much more laid back than Johannesburg I, was. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying Cape Town. Just the atmosphere in general, being able to be outside, yeah. walk around everywhere. The temperature's much better during yeah. the day. It's still cold at night, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah, much more enjoyable. For sure. Um, and we didn't really plan to do anything yesterday, but there was someone else that was going into town. There's this Canadian student um, who's doing a research project Steve here at the University on. of Cape Town. Yeah, I have a picture of him. We'll show you. Redhead kid, really nice guy. And he has been to town several times, so he, he took us in there. We saw the Green Market Square. Everything was closed because it was a Sunday for the most part. There were a couple of places that were open. But we had lunch and then um, went down to the v &A waterfront. That stands for Virginia and Alfred. I originally thought it was Virginia and Alexandra, but I was wrong. Um, and we went on like that big gondola Ferris wheel type thing. Um, Ferris wheel, not gondola. It's a gondola seating. Anyway, P.S. Um, at least we went on this when we were in Niagara Falls for um, Kara's wedding. That's the same thing. Anyway, um, you're probably not going to watch this anyways, but um, we also got cotton candy. We walked around. We saw where the Robin Island Ferry took off from, and there was, like, some limbo stuff going on with fire, but we didn't really watch that. And then... Um, they had face painting. I wanted to get my face painted, she but did. we didn't have time. I was the voice of reason yet again in that situation. Um, <laughs> we had a re regression back to four-year-old years, but I, I managed it. Um, and then <laughs> we also went to the grocery store because there's one near here yesterday. So we got our, like, you know, food for things because obviously we're going to be here for 12 days and we want to cut down on costs. Um, we had a little bit of, like, a pouting situation in the grocery store. We were, like, both tired and we weren't really talking to each other. And, um, but we, we overcame that because we always do. Um, and then what did we do last night? We went to dinner with Stephen and another friend of his who's staying um, in, their, in their house. Anna. A Anne. Oh, Stephanie Anne, uh, wasn't a fan. Um, and she was, you know, type A personality, um, talked a lot about grades and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So anyway, it was interesting. Um, but the pizza was good. Steph and Steven had pasta that was, seemed to be good as well. Reasonably priced. The, the wait waiter seemed like he was on cocaine. He was very, very high strung and yeah, on adrenaline. That was the most entertaining waiter I've ever had in my entire life. Like he showed up, like his eyes were like open wide. He said that he'd gone, what, how do you say it? Abseiling? Abseiling, yeah. Um, Abseil milk. Like, Anyway, then we just came back here and got another night. We were pretty tired. So we got to morning at 7. Um, oh, I think I forgot to mention we had a little bit of... Um, Come say hi. Well, 
social commerce. Uh, he's on, on the slides. Um, oh, we're gonna a quick introduction here. <laughs> a guest, um, a guest appearance. blogger by our friend Tools. She's staying in our room. Tools, Mama, say hi. Cece. Cece. <laughs> <laughs> Tools, tell them about yourself. Tell them about yourself hey. a little bit. Tell them oh. about yourself. Hi. What are you doing here? I, 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 I should, it's just I, a blog. Should listen. No, yeah. th- oh. there's, 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 we're recording oh, oh. you. But tell them why you're here and what you're doing. Um, my name is Tools Tulela. I'm staying here because I'm waiting to move into a flat um, in a week's time, and I'm a, I'm an educator, and I'm also doing my masters in education, and yeah, I'm South African. Yeah. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Water bottle? Where'd you get that from? Oh, uh, you buy it from Pick and Pay. Oh, you're smart, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, cold makes you, you know, no, do I know. funny things. I agree. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we were just, okay, so we're just finished. We're, basically, we were just saying the story was that we were um, on the bus, and this guy named Russell came up to us. He was he was the driver, one of the drivers, and um, he said that he wanted our business in Cape Town. So, like, that, that was fine, but then we already had everything booked through Green Elephant, which is the hostel mm-hmm. and the and the tours. But he said he wanted to book, rebook them. Did you see him when he came? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the, yeah. right. The, the, yeah. yeah. So then yeah. he approached me when I was going to the bathroom, one of the stops, and he said, "I've decided that I'm going to come pick you up at 11 o'clock, and we're going to go look at alternative arrangements." And I know I cannot. I'm I'm not always the most assertive um, when it comes to clearly communicating with people, mm-hmm. but. Um, and we should have called him if he made that announcement to say that we weren't interested in doing that. So, point taken. Um, I take full responsibility. But anyways, he showed up at 11 o'clock, and they said someone's here to see Alana Rogers, and we both looked at each other like we didn't know what was going on. And then he walked in with his wife, who also runs tours, and um, he said, are you ready to go? So, Steph and I stared at each other for about five seconds in silence, and then I stuttered well, something well, else I about said, I said that we... Um, <laughs> Wait, it's like social awkwardness I said, oh, I said that we had to go out um, grocery shop, which is the truth. I mean, I oh, said the truth. We were going out grocery there, shopping. Yeah. yeah, you were. Cute. We were going out grocery shopping to get our lunch, and then we were going to go um, to a braai in a couple hours, which was the truth, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, he he made it easier for us, and he just said, "Okay, we'll enjoy your trip," and left. I mean, obviously. <laughs> but he like made us feel guilty you? by bringing his wife and stuff. Like, we never said to come, but he obviously he just showed up. Well, I know. Like, but if he said he was going to come, that, we should like, have arranged. Alana didn't mean yeah. to, but. Um, she's Same always, really very, say. always very friendly <laughs> to strangers and was overly friendly right, right at the get-go to this man. Obviously didn't know that he was going to be offering all these <laughs> amenities to Where us. Where did he meet this man? On the bus. On the, the bus. Oh, oh. But was oh, saying from the, like, from the yes. get-go that she wanted oh, to okay. book the bus ride so back with him and stuff. Like, um, was going to look into when he was coming back and stuff. So just... I think you just took it the wrong way. Um, it's my fault. Not, not, I, no, I, I do that all the time. My it, communication it issues, what, but wasn't on purpose. But yeah, um, anyway, that's lightly awkward. I'll just say that, and um, that was kind of. I just anyway. Um, so aside from that, um, what was the other major, major thing we were going to say? I don't know. I don't remember. Something about tools. Um, Sorry, just I know. no. I just forget. <laughs> I forgot. Um, okay, I guess that's about it, right? We're gonna do this uh, public well, today, holiday here. No, today we did um, Robin Island. Robin Island. Yeah, which is Beauti- it's so beautiful down at the coast. Tell us about Robin Island, oh, no, tell no, us, no, no. since you're from here. Mm, Robin Island, Robin Island. Wow, well, Robin Island is an island where uh, Mandela, the famous Nelson Mandela, was um, arrested, and some other guys, and they stayed there for 27 years, and um, his cell is full triple six four. Um, and he was the 466th um, prisoner in in the year 1964. So that's mm-hmm. what it stands for. And um, yeah, well, what else? Um, why is it significant? Well, it's significant because you know, Nelson Mandela was was um, was staying there, was there when he was arrested, amongst other many other African leaders, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, what? How, when did it? When did it end? When did it close down? Mm, well, Mandela was released, uh, but he was already staying in another prison. Was when it, he was it ninety three or ninety one? It was ninety. Ninety. He came out of prison in 1990. No, yeah. when the prison closed. I'm not, I can't remember. Can't remember. I think it's either ninety one or ninety three. Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, that was like a, obviously um, a very culturally significant tour. Um, and since Stephanie and I got a chance to go to the Apartheid Museum while we were in Johannesburg and Constitutional Hill, a lot of the um, references made sense to us, which is um, 
valuable in terms of trying to interpret interpret what was going on. Also, the person that gave the tour was an ex prisoner himself, Mandela. Yeah, I think was his name Mandela. Mande- Mandela. Okay. Um, yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah, it was it, great to get a perspective from someone who was actually there because when he went through touring um, the various cells and areas, and he was saying sort of we were mm-hmm. here and we did this mm-hmm. and we were assigned our numbers here. So yeah, and then one other quick thing I mentioned was the fact that um, this is this is very uh, very clever. When one of the ways that they have these different components of the prison, like A, B, C, and D, um, and without going into the details, basically they were allowed to, the prisoners were allowed to play sports. So they would play tennis, and they would they would rip out the center of the ball and put information inside the ball, and mm. then stitch it back mm. and pretend like they were hitting the ball over the other, into the other court by accident. And that's how they pass information on. And the guards never even found out until mm-hmm. after they were out of prison. Yeah, so. yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, we like that one. And that's where uh, Mandela also started writing his book. Right, yeah, that's right. And mm-hmm. someone smuggled yeah, it out, that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The, the long walk to freedom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and they used to teach. I mean, most of them were um, the different mm-hmm. yeah professions, and they used to teach one another. They used to write on the um, on the sand with their fingers. They right. Used to teach one another, you know, like also English because right. some of them talk about reading, and right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What I found that was interesting was because the um, the tour guide on the bus kept on saying education is a privilege, a privilege, not a right. But then to the prisoners right, themselves, not a privilege. And they right, said, not a privilege. Right, not, no, uh, no, the prisoner uh. himself said it's a right, not a privilge, which is just. Because, like, the um, the tour guide is coming from the perspective of, I guess, like, the guards, right? Because he said it was a privilege, not a right. Oh, so who said who said it's a privilege, not a right? The, pres- the, the, the guards? Tour guide, the tour guide. Uh, on right? our tour? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because she was speaking from the perspective of the guards and the administration there. But then uh, when we were given the tour through the cells, then that was the prisoner's perspective, which was the reverse, which I, I thought was interesting. Maybe you didn't pick up on that. These backhanded slaps come in every direction. No, I'm I'm not even. Right. <laughs> okay, no, I'm I'm agreeing. Sorry. Yeah. All right, this po- post has gone a little bit too long. Um, so anyway, Very we're going to sign off for now. Um, hopefully, if you stick with, stuck with us this entire time, then you've uh, been enlightened somewhat and at least partially entertained. But glad you got to meet Tools here. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll come back at you, at you in the next couple of days with hopefully some more information. Okay. Okay. Good night, everybody. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh God.